Hi there, Hillary here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. This episode of Cold Water Curiosities is actually nice and warm today. It's almost 70 degrees, but that doesn't mean that the water is not still chilly. Now, I wore my Finn Studio earrings from P&W Customs' sister company in hopes that I could find some cool shrimp while I was out here. However, I found something even cooler, and that is sand dollars. So grab yourself a snack and a drink, and we're gonna get started here shortly. Now, just like their name suggests, sand dollars live in the sand. Now, when I come out to film these videos, I typically try and come out at low tide to give myself access to the most beach space as possible. Now, today when I came out, it happens to be the second lowest low tide of the month, which means I have access to a lot more beach than I would typically have. And it's why I was able to find these sand dollars today. So while the water in this tank is clearing up, let me tell you a little bit about sand dollars. This is the eccentric sand dollar. It's actually the only species of sand dollar that can be found here in the Pacific Northwest. That being said, there are approximately 250 different species of sand dollars found in the waters worldwide. Sand dollars are considered echinoderms. Basically, this means that they're marine animals with radial five-part symmetry. Even though this sand dollar species is the only species that's found here in the Pacific Northwest, you can actually find them all the way from Alaska down to Baja, California, in sandy environments between the low intertidal areas and all the way down as deep as 290 feet. Now, something that I found really fascinating about this specific species is that in the subtidal areas, now this means that the areas that are lower than the lowest low tide, you can find these sand dollars in densities of up to 523 individuals per square yard. If you've ever seen one of those square card tables, it's the same size as that. Can you imagine finding more than 500 sand dollars in a small space like that? That's quite a few individuals considering that the diameter of them is only between three and four inches wide and they're approximately a quarter of an inch high or tall. Now the lifespan of these guys is actually fairly long. They can live up to nine years. So when you find sand dollars on the beach, there's a fairly easy test that you can do to see if they're alive. If you look at the color of them and it is a white or an off-white color, there's a good chance that they are dead or at least on their way out. But if you see them and they're a dark brown or a dark purple, that's a pretty good indicator that they are alive and well. Now their entire body is covered with small spines and tube feet. In looking close, you can see them moving those spines and those tube feet around. It's pretty cool. The top of the sand dollar and the bottom of the sand dollar look two different ways. So on the top, you're going to see signs of that five-part symmetry in the petals that make up the shapes on the top of its shell. So each of those petals has two different rows of pores that allow for gas exchange. If you were to flip the sand dollar over on its back, you will find a different sort of symmetry shape. Instead of those petals, you're going to see long food grooves that follow along the same shape as those petals that range from the outside of the shell all the way into the center where its mouth is. Now along the edge of those food grooves, you will also find the tube feet that help to move the food from the outside of the shell into the center where its mouth is. If you look closely, you might see a small dot or a indentation on the bottom of their shell, and that is the area that they use to excrete waste. I mentioned a second ago that they have both tube feet and spines, but I wanted to give you a little more information on what the uses of each of those are. 
So their spines are actually used for digging themselves into the sand and for moving themselves around, as well as assisting with feeding and defense, whereas their tube feet are used to help them breathe, to sense the water flow and any sort of organisms that might be moving around them, and to assist in feeding. So sand dollars are detritivores. It might be questionable as to how they do this, this flat shaped plate. They're able to use those tube feet and those spines to angle themselves almost upright in the sand. And so as the currents are passing by them, bringing particles and nutrients through and past them, they're able to collect that with those spines and with those tube feet, and they're able to filter feed from the water column itself. Are there any predators for sand dollars? Yes, in fact, there are. Several of the predators for sand dollars include sea stars like leather sea stars and sunflower starfish. There's also fish such as bottom feeders like flounders and some of those puffer fish that might prey on them. Crabs are also another predator, as well as the occasional sea otter. And we can't discount humans because honestly, many of us collect their shells to use in decoration. When it comes to sand dollars in aquariums, honestly, Finding them in home aquariums is fairly rare. I will say that there are many public aquariums that have sand dollars on display, but honestly, they're not the easiest species to keep, mostly because they need so much sand and a healthy, well-established sand bed that is very oxygenated. And in the case of eccentric sand dollars, it needs to have cold water. This video has been very special for me. I can remember as a kid walking along the beach and finding bleached or dead sand dollars all the time. And to be able to not only find sand dollars, but find live sand dollars and be able to share that with you makes me really happy. I hope you've enjoyed this just as much as I have, and I really look forward to seeing you for the next video. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.